Hello, my name is Mr. Bryce, and I'm with Susquehanna Valley High School here in Conklin, New York. If you have any questions, just drop me a note. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you can scan that QR code, and that's the person who wrote these worksheets, and he'll explain it to you in a different way. What we're doing is we are doing uh, Lesson 5, pages 17 to 18, for this is the non-regents algebra common core. Two, the method of uh, common bases. So, if you remember a couple days ago, in class, we told you about a little trick up our sleeve. Well, we're going to explain it a little bit more in depth here. There are very few algebraic techniques that do not involve technology to solve an equation that contains exponential expressions. Well, uh, the technology teacher over in the middle school would say everything involves technology. I mean, even a stick is a piece of technology or a board for leverage is technology with a fulcrum. So in this lesson, we're going to look at one of the few known as the method of common bases. Let's solve each of the following simple exponential equations by writing each side of the equation using a common base. So not only do we have to solve it, but it tells us the specific technique that we have to solve it using. Notice that these are all prime numbers. This is not a prime number. So we are going to examine these all with prime numbers. So 16 is really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 4th equals 2 to the x. Now, I am going to show you in depth how we do this. If you take the log of the left-hand side and the log, and this is base 10 because we're not writing anything down here for the base, so we know we're working in log base 10 and the log of the right-hand side. Now, there's a rule with logs that I can bring the exponent in front. Now, you notice that I have x times the log of 2 equals 4 times the log of 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 2, and that is an actual number. Uh, when I was your age, we used log tables. So what I have is since I divided both sides by log base 10 of 2, I have x equals 4. That's the only thing that's left. We're going to do this a lot shorter on the next one. So 27 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. It's, why did I pick 3? Well, it's not even, so it's not 2. So I went to the next prime. Oh, wait a minute. That's the big clue right there. We have to have a common base. Big clue. So 27 is 3 cubed. Now we can go through all of this log work or... We see that there are common bases, so I know that the exponents are equal to each other. Here, 5 to the x is the same as 25 to the negative 1. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. I brought this to the opposite side of the equal sign, so I had to uh, make the exponent a negative. When you bring some, not equal sign, fraction bar. When you bring something to the opposite side of the fraction bar, you make the exponent negative. When you bring something to the opposite of the fraction bar, you can make the exponent negative. Now, 5 to the x equals 25 is really 5 squared to the negative 1. Now, we're going to use our exponent rule to say 5 to the x equals 5 to the negative 2. If you don't understand, make sure you ask me. So, x equals negative 2. And here's the fun one. Neither of them are prime, but we know 4 is 2 squared. Hopefully we know that. So 16 is 2 to the 4th. We're going to use the same thing that we used right there and bring the x there. So 2 to the 4x equals 2 squared. 4x equals 2. Divide both sides by 4. 
divide both sides by four. What did I say? I said divide by both sides by four. So X equals one half. Cool. In each of these cases, even the last one, the more challenging one, we could ma ma manipulate, easy for you to say, manipulate the right side of the equation so it shares a common base with the left side of the equation. We can exploit the fact by manipulating both sides so they have a common base. First, let's review some of the exponent laws. Remember, this is just two. We multiply these. That's 3x. Multiply them because it's an exponent. It's nested. Now here... It's 3, 2 times 4x, which is 3 to the 8x. This one is 5, and then negative 1 times 3x minus 7 is the same as 5. And then negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x, and negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. That equals 4, and then negative 3 times 1 minus x looks like a cube to me. So what is that? That is 4, and then negative 3 plus 3x cubed. Exercise 3. Solve each of the following equations by finding a common base. Okay, we're going to try to reduce these to prime numbers. Uh, we know that both of these are even, so let's try 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So this is 2, and then I said 2 times 2 times 2 3 times, so that's 2 to the 3x equals, uh, let me see, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. That would be 2 to the 5th. We have a common base, so we take the log base 10 of both sides. We divide by log base 10 of 2 on both sides. And we're left with 3x equals 5, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 1 and 2 thirds, or 5 thirds. Here, I see that uh, this is odd, so I'm going to try 3 instead of 5. It doesn't end in a 5. So uh, 3 times 3 is 9. Good, so this is 3. And then 2 times 2x plus 1 equals... 3 to the 3, 9, 27, so it's 3 cubed. You didn't see it, but I had 3 fingers. 3, 9, 27, so that's 3 cubed. So now I take, uh, I, I take the log base 10 of both sides, so I have the log, divide both sides by the log base 10 of 3, and I'm just left with the exponent. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because it's not some magic that I'm doing. I'm just not dropping the bases. Now I could divide both sides by 2, but I'm going to distribute. So I have 4x plus 2 equals 3. Subtract 2 from both sides. 4x equals 1. Divide by 4 on both sides. x equals 1 fourth. Uh, 25. It's not even. Uh, I could try 3s, but they both end in 5. So why don't I just do 5 times 5 is 25. And 25 times 5 is 125. So this is 5 cubed times x equals 5 times 5 is 25. So this is really 5 to the negative 2. I'm going to bring it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So it becomes a negative exponent. And then 4 minus x. So take the log base 10 of both sides and then divide by log base 10 of 5 on both sides. And I get 3x equals negative 8 plus 2x. Subtract 2x from both sides, and I get x equals negative 8. Oh, nice. Which of the following represents the solution set to the equation? 2 raised uh, to the x squared minus 3 equals 64. Okay, since this is already a prime number, hopefully uh, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 2 to the 6th. So I now know that take the log base uh, 10 uh, of 2 on both sides, and I get x squared minus 
to three equals six. Okay, that freaked me out for a couple seconds, and I had to go back in my mind and look and see that, oh, this is x squared minus 3. It's not x2 minus 3. Uh, so there we go. It's x squared minus 3. So I subtract 6 from both sides. Why? Mm. I don't want to do that. You see in a second, I went through the whole thing in my head and tried to factor it. Now I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. This is really nice. x squared equals 9. Hmm. Okay, so uh, what number squared equals 9? Uh, let me see, 3 and negative 3. Now, uh, it doesn't have just one of these as uh, just 3. It has 3 and 0. I was going to say, if uh, we actually do have to test, um, let's see if 3 works. Okay, so um, if I plug... 3 in here, I get 9 minus uh, 3 is 6. Now, if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 minus 3 is 6. So both of them do work. Great. Let's see what's on the next page. Where did I plug them in? You're probably, uh, I was pointing and I wasn't using the smiley. Because we all know when I am recording, you can all see what I'm pointing at. No. So I plugged in the 3 and the negative 3 into the exponent uh, x squared minus 3 to make sure it equaled 6. There we go. Next page. This technique that we just used can be used in any situation where the bases involved can be written as a common base. That means that uh, you know we're not going to have uh, we're not going to have something like um, 9x equals um, 36 um, to the x minus 2. Okay, uh, we see this is a 3, uh, but this is uh, 6 squared, you know, so it's not uh, 3 to the 2x equals uh, 6 to the 2x minus 4. So we still don't have a common base and we can't get any common bases with those. So that uh, happens a lot more often in the real world than finding a common base. So let's try to tackle a more uh, challenging problem here. The two exponential curves, uh, y equals 4 to the x plus 5 halves, and y equals 1 half uh, to the 2x plus 1 are shown below. They intersect at point A. They drew a rectangle, one vertex at the origin, the other at point A where they intersect. We want to find the area of the rectangle. Fundamentally, what do we need to know about a rectangle to find its area? Well, you only need to know the length and the width. That's not an addition symbol because the area equals length times width. How do we know the coordinates of point A to help us find the area? How would knowing the coordinates of point A help us find the area? Well, the coordinates of point A are x, y. And x is that far. That's x. And y is how high it is. It's that far. The length and the width. So I'm going to say that uh, x, since it's the shortest side, is the width, and y is the length. Now, if you said uh, width and height or something like that, same thing. Find the area of the rectangle algebraically using the method of common bases. Show your work carefully. We've been talking over the last several days of how dangerous a statement is of y equals or something equals. Uh, now what we have is we have both of these equations set up as y equals, but uh, what I did here was I wrote uh, y equals on the left-hand side and the right-hand side so that I can move it, and there we go. These two equations equal each other.
one y replace the other. That's why we can take this and say um, the one half is really two to the negative one, two x plus one. Four is really two squared, x plus five halves. We're lucky that this is a two. For the denominator there, it'd be a half. So now we have negative 2x minus 1 equals 2x plus 5. What? Oh, yeah. Didn't we all know that uh, 5 halves times 2 over 1 is 5 times 2 is 10, and 1 times 2 is 2? So that's just 5. That's why we're lucky. Erasing. So I add 2x to both sides, and I get negative 1 equals 4x plus 5. I subtract 5 from both sides, and I get negative 6 equals 4x. And I divide by 4, and I get negative 6 over 4 equals x, also known as negative 1 and a half. Negative 1.5 equals x. Exercise 6. At what coordinate will the graph of y equals 25 uh, to the x minus a intersect the graph of 1 over 125, 3x plus 1? Show the work that leads to your choice. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and turn the positive uh, into a uh, integer. So that is 125 to the negative 1 times 3x plus 1. Okay. 125 is the same as 5 cubed. 5 cubed times negative 1 times 3x plus 1. Negative, uh, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. I'm going to distribute negative 3. 5 to the negative 9x minus 3. Double check. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 3 times 1 is minus 3. There we go. This is 5 squared. To the x minus a. So we want to know when they equal because that's where the intersection happens. So it's 5 to the 2x minus 2a. They now have common bases, so I can set the exponents equal to each other. 2x minus 2a equals negative 9x minus 3. Now I notice that all of these answers have x all by itself, so I'm going to add the 9x to both sides of the equation because x is positive in both and all four of the answers. So I have 11x minus 2a equals negative 3. I'm going to add 2a to both sides. 11x equals negative 3 plus 2a. I look at the answers and I see a comes first. So I'm going to, since this is addition, I'm going to commute it. 2a minus 3 equals 11x. Now I'm going to divide by 11 divide by 11, and I get x equals 2a minus 3 all over 11. Fantastic. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me in class. Uh, right now, your homework is going to be the next page, at least number one, uh, definitely number one. If I tell you otherwise in class, then it'll be longer. See you later. This is Mr. Bryce, signing out.